Hello everyone, Stephen Graham here, artist from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, member of the Bartlesville Art Association and art teacher here in town. Today I wanted to do a quick little video on how to take photos of your artwork. This is basically for non-professionals. If you don't have uh, fancy lighting equipment, I'm going to talk about how you can uh, get good photographs of your artwork. Today I'm going to be uh, shooting this artwork here which is a painting I did of the blue whale over in Catoosa, Oklahoma. And this is not really a finished painting, it's just one I'm going to demonstrate with. It's one I did as a demo for one of my classes. So it's not necessarily a finished or great painting, but I'm going to photograph it today anyway. So I'm going to use the best camera that I have available, which is what you should do when you're photographing your artwork. If you happen to have a digital uh, DSLR camera, uh, these are, uh, this would be what I would prefer to shoot with. If you only have a phone camera, you can shoot with a phone camera. The uh, image quality on many phone cameras now is very good. Uh, sometimes the problem is not really the image size, but the lens on it is not going to be quite as good. And a lot of these are a wide angle type of lens. So if you get close to something and take a picture, you will have a distortion in portraits taken with these. Um, up close, if you do sell a lot of selfies, you'll notice that your nose is bigger and it's distorting things a little bit. So if I take a picture of something that's rectangular, then the edges will be slightly um, warped uh, looking because it is that fisheye lens on a digital camera. Also, and you can zoom in a little bit with a digital camera to uh, correct for some of that. But when you do zoom on, a, on most camera phones, uh, when you zoom in, you are losing some quality because it is just like cropping in the image. So you don't want to zoom too much. With uh, this lens here, I can, uh, I can zoom it all the way in and take care of any distortions that might happen. This is not a wide angle lens. This is just my standard lens. I don't usually shoot my artwork with a telephoto either. I just usually shoot with this, um, this um, <clears throat> 55 millimeter lens here. So um, <clears throat> this painting, and your artwork, you want it uh, to not be shiny, if at all possible. So when you are, uh, this, this painting has not had any kind of a varnish or clear coat on it. If you're painting in oil paint or acrylic, you, you want to take your photographs of your work before you apply varnish on it. So most of mine, I use uh, this um, Liquitex uh, gel medium on it, and I get a, uh, a little bit semi-glossy, uh, coating on it and I don't want that. I don't want reflections uh, showing up in my work. If you're a watercolor painter and you're taking a photograph of a watercolor work, then you want to um, take it out from under the glass. If it's already framed in glass, you need to remove it. It's very difficult to take a painting that is under glass. If you are working with uh, metallic paints and you're trying to photograph a work that is uh, done with metallics, or gold foils or things like that, then that is a whole other problem and can be very difficult to photograph. So um, some of those type of things you might even have to photograph at an angle and not straight on, which is not ideal, but you can use some perspective uh, correction on your computer uh, and, and make it square again. So if you have to do that, if you're uh, painting something that's a very reflective type of painting, then uh, that opens up some new problems you'll have to deal with. Now there's several reasons an artist might want to photograph their work. One would just be to document what you've done. If you're going to sell your pieces or give them away, then you would like to keep a record of your work. If uh, maybe you uh, want to make prints, so you can photograph to make canvas prints or have it developed at, the, uh, at a, a photography lab. So um, that would be another reason for photographing your artwork. Another reason would be that you want to enter it in some type of a show. And so you need digital, maybe a digital uh, copy of it to enter in some of the new digital art shows. Uh, another reason would be to publish it yourself online so other people can see your work. So these are some reasons that an artist might want to photograph their work. And for these purposes, we are mostly talking about trying to capture the image as true to life as possible. We're not talking about uh, altering um, a lot of the, the artwork digitally after we take it. So when we balance it on the computer and we um, try to make the colors as accurate to the original as possible, I would say, in, in my own opinion, if you are taking the uh, photograph and 
radically changing it with the computer, uh, taking out certain colors and highlighting other colors and maybe, you know, doing some other kinds of things digitally to it that change it, then it's a new work of art. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, if you were going to enter it in a show, you would have to um, say this is now a digital work of art and no longer um, a painting. So, uh, you've got to consider that. Mostly today, I am demonstrating how to photograph a flat artwork, a painting. But if you are photographing uh, a sculpture, some of these same things will apply. With a sculpture, you want to get rid of most of the objects in the background. When I am photographing my boomerangs, for instance, it's not exactly a sculpture. It's still flat, but it will have some background around it because it's not a framed work of art. So I will have some different surfaces I will try out the boomerang on. I will lay it on my uh, on a table that's painted black with some rusty spots on it. I will put it up against the old fence. I will put it on a white surface. I will try it out on different surfaces and see what I think looks best. And I will photograph it against all those surfaces and then determine later what looks best. When I am photographing my work, I photograph it before I frame it. This way I don't have to worry about getting any of the frame in or uh, losing more of the work because of the frame. So I know I'm going to lose a little bit of the edge of this anyway when I put it in a frame. So if I photograph it without the frame, I can crop it in to where the frame would naturally be. But if it's in a frame, I'm going to lose a little bit more. When I take my work outside to photograph it, I like to go out in the morning time if I can and catch that beautiful morning light. If it's an overcast day, that can be very nice to get that indirect lighting. I don't usually photograph it in the direct sunlight. Sometimes I'll take a few shots of it in direct sunlight, but usually those are not going to be as good. Um, if I'm my paintings on canvas, a lot of times those will make the canvas texture very obvious and I don't usually want that. So some of the unusual textures might show up if you take it in direct sunlight. So I try to get bounce light or reflected light and um, I will show that when I go outside and take these pictures. Here is one place I sometimes put my work to photograph it. Up on this mailbox here. Getting some maybe some reflected light from off the porch but I've got shade here. And so what I do is this painting is leaning slightly so I try to uh, get parallel to the work. Then I will back off and I try to be directly in the center of the work. I'll back up here and focus in on it on the top and bottom on this one. Very close to the edge of the frame and I will start shooting some pictures. A tripod can be used and will help but I just try to hold it very still. Almost holding my breath as I hit the shutter. And we'll take several pictures of it that way. Now I'm going to get directly above the work and take some pictures of it from directly above. I try to tighten the, the strap so that it supports the camera and allows it not to move as much. Take your time. So this area is shady but I might be getting a little bounce light from the car. I'm going to put it in the shadow from my trash can and allowing some of this light maybe to bounce off this white surface. Be careful in the wind. If you have a large painting, this day would be pretty windy to try to take a, uh, a photograph because your work might blow. I will go to the side of the house and take some in the shadow from the side of the house. Um, I, might take, I might take a few in the sunlight. It is slightly overcast today, so I will lay it here. I'll make sure nothing blows on top of it. I will uh, move around to make sure there's no shadows on the work. And I will take it this way. I might also take several this way. So I'm trying some light coming in from different directions on it because that can affect the way it looks. Again, making sure I'm right directly above the image. I am zoomed out with this lens. Because if I get too close and zoom in, well, I have more of a chance of getting a shadow and I have more of a chance of distortions, too. Plug on it. All right, let's go see what we got. Now, here we are at the computer, 
and we have the images downloaded from the camera so we can go through them and look at them and try to decide which uh, are, which image is the most accurate um, because here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match the colors of the original as close as possible on this monitor so it could be slightly different on different computer monitors but um, if you know your monitor and you're reasonably sure that it's uh, fairly accurate as far as it's the colors it represents then it's going to be okay so um, for taking flat artwork like this uh, this is this is my process to go out and take a many many pictures of it in different locations and see which matches the best um, for taking uh, sculptures I will try to isolate the sculpture and take a picture of it against the sky outside or I might use the roof of my car to take a picture. I might take it to the park and photograph it so that it looks like it's in the park or with some trees off in the distance. Um, a lot of times in, in my backyard I photograph my boomerangs and I have several surfaces there to photograph boomerangs. So I'll put them up against a rough wooden fence, I'll lay them on a, a table that I've painted black, I'll put them against some other surfaces and photograph them and see which uh, looks best. So if I'm photographing something that doesn't have a, a uh, you know, you're going to see some of the background on like a, a sculpture or a boomerang, then the methods is a little bit different. but. Um, basically take a lot of images and find what works best so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, balancing the photo and um, what kind of software you might want to use to do that with some artists will take uh, pictures of their work and then change the work greatly now um, here I'm trying to capture as close to the painting as possible uh, if I took it say and changed uh, colors and added things digitally I would say that is no longer a photograph of the painting but that could be a new work of art so if I make great changes to it uh, um, it's going to be a work of digital art and no longer represents the painting exactly as it is so here I'm trying to match what I've done and if you're entering an art show that's important that you are actually matching the painting rather than changing it into a new digital work of art unless you're allowed to enter a digital work of art and then you would have to enter it in that digital art category so that would be something a little bit different so sometimes with my sketchbook drawings for instance I will photograph them and then run them through some other programs that will change them a lot and I'll colorize them and things on the computer so that makes it into a digital work of art then so that's something a little bit different the program I like to use is called paint.net and I'll put a link to it down below. Um, if you have Photoshop, Photoshop's a great program to use of course, but paint.net has the advantage of being an open source free program. You will, if you download paint.net from their website, you will also want to add the effects pack with it, the, the mega effects pack, which will have some other sliders to balance your picture uh, more accurately. So I'm going to look through them here and decide what I like best. So here we can see some of the images and I'm just going to uh, go through them and try to decide is this one better? Better this one or better this one? I'll look through them and sometimes I will uh, throw away ones that this one is slightly blurry. So I must have moved on that one. That one's number 31 so I'm going to throw out number 31. Just get it out of the way. So sometimes I will do that. This one is no good. This one has a little more rich color right here. A little more rich color to this one for some reason. So maybe I will use it. This is number, sometimes I'll write these numbers down as I work. This is number 36. Picture number 36. Looks pretty good. This is one I can tell I took in more direct sunlight and it won't really show up here on the video but you can definitely see the texture of the canvas. So if you do take in more harsh light things like the texture of the canvas will show up and so I probably don't want that to be so obvious because it's not quite so obvious uh, when you're looking at the real painting. This is the last one. So I think I'll take 31 and put it into my program and balance it and crop it. So now I've opened that in paint.net and I'm going to start off by cropping that in. Um, I could slightly uh, go to my layers tool here and slightly, uh, it's a little bit uh, not square so I'm going to 
tip it a little bit less than that, I'm going to have to go in 0.5. Let's try 0.5. Cropping tool here and put it right here and uh, see what I can do. It's not perfectly square. So I've lost just a little bit around the edge, but if but when you frame the work, you would lose a little bit around the edge anyway. So uh, that's not really a problem. Now I'm going to use my curves tool and uh, set it to RGB and um, see what I can do with that. If I can I can brighten it slightly. I can darken my shadows a little bit. I want to be sure I have the real painting here so that I can compare and see if I'm matching my real painting. It's not bad. I have color balancing tools on here that I can use some of my color balancing tools. And like I say, again, if I take this thing and and make it something totally unnatural from what the painting is then it's not really the same thing anymore so I'm not going to do something like that um, but if I think the blue needs to be a little brighter I could pop the blue make it a little bit brighter but I don't want to do too much I want to try to keep everything um, as true to the real painting as possible sometimes I will uh, pull a slider all the way up and then put it back to where I think it needs to go. That helps you see what it's uh, actually doing. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to name it um, Blue Whale Demo and put a date on it. I'll often uh, name my things on my computer and put uh, the date that it was done so I can find it again easily later on. Make sure of that. I don't know what that is right there. Let's see if that's on the original. It's there. Oh, no, it's just a piece of something that was on there. So I do want to take that out. I'm going to get my tools and use my smudge tool to um, smudge that little, turn my jitter up, and just blur that out of there. That is not perfect. Let's undo that. Let's do it. To, let's get this thing a little bit smaller. All right, that's good. So when you finish balancing your picture, you need to make sure you save it at the highest quality uh, resolution you can. And um, it'll look great. If you matched your original, you've done your job. Many times I will also take pictures of a painting as I'm working on it. Now for that, a lot of times I will just use my phone camera because I'm not so concerned with uh, showing those as a final uh, to anybody. Sometimes I do publish them, but um, just to show my process and um, a lot of times photographing a work um, even before you're all the way done with it you can find mistakes in the work so it can sure help to uh, and for that I'll use my phone camera a lot of times so I will use my phone camera sometimes as an initial way to photograph my work look for mistakes in it and then I will photograph it uh, with my better camera later on you guys keep being creative keep making art photograph it and get it out there on the internet Show it off. Have some fun. See y'all later. Yeah, 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 yeah.